what does it mean to be a mom? What does it mean to be a mom? What does it mean to be a mom? Oh gosh, that's a hard one. Am I supposed to sum that up in like 20 words or less? Well, to be a mom is, it's hectic. Incredibly hard most days. Sleepless nights. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Tap, tap, tap. Just a lot. <laughs> You're always late for everything. It's messy. Lots of messes. Laundry. I mean, it's constant. It feels like sometimes uncoordinated. <laughs> Cleaning up the spilt milk in the kitchen while looking into their eyes and, and having the grit after you just had the worst day ever and saying, I love you, it's okay. <laughs> To be a mom, to me, has been the best memories of my life. It feels like having a little piece of your heart walking around outside of your body. It's rewarding to love unconditionally. It's overwhelming, overwhelming joy. Just seeing the excitement in their eyes. Protecting, doing whatever I can to make sure that my kids feel loved. It's probably the most honorable thing I've ever done. It's a mission, it's a mission from God, like it gives you so much purpose knowing that God has called you to raise these kids um, in a way that's honoring to Him. You're shaping children to go out into the world and hopefully live for the Lord. You know, there are those moments where you just have to buckle down and do the, fun, the hard things, but... It's the hardest, best thing I've ever done. If I could go back and do one of these, those days over again, I would absolutely love that. Happy Mother's Day again, and I uh, know we have a quite a few moms here today, and we have prepared uh, some scriptural truths that I think will be an inspiration to all of our moms. Before we dive in, I've got a, I've got a joke for you. you got, <laughs> I've got to always have a joke. You want a Mother's Day joke? Yes. Okay. Sure. Do we need to vote on this? <laughs> okay, there was this uh, little girl that went to her mom and said, Mom. I noticed that you've got a few gray hairs coming out of the back of your head. Why, why is your hair gray like that? She said, honey, I'm just going to be honest with you. Every time that you get on my nerves, I get a gray hair. Every time you bother me or make me mad, I get a gray hair. Every time I'm upset with you, I get a gray hair. That's just what happens, honey. She said, well, mommy, why does grandmother have all of her hair gray? <laughs> okay. That's, that's something to think about. Um, <laughs> we'd like, um, uh, we keep recognizing you, but we really do want to recognize you one more time. If you don't mind standing, moms, we just want to yes. look at you. Come on, mom. I'll stand with you. Come on, mom. And All applaud moms you. And, and just say thank you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. So today is a celebratory day, and it's a time out of the kitchen. It's an opportunity to be showered with, with gifts and affection and, and all the good stuff, but it's also a day of pain and sorrow for some, and we want to recognize that because many in here have lost mothers, and so today is bittersweet. And then there are moms who have lost children, yeah. and today is almost unbearable. And then, of course, there are there are those who are would-be moms, and it just hasn't happened for you, and so this is, this is a hard service to sit through, and so we want to acknowledge that there are sorrows in motherhood, and with that, with that in mind, we want to kind of remind and not rebuke or, or guilt any, any moms in the room, but remind you what, a, what an honor, what a joy, and what an opportunity we have with the gifts of children that God's given us. Yeah, so let's pray. Father, thank you once again for today. We pause right now as we start this session. We want to just give honor to you by just recognizing the fact that you've established this role on earth to make kingdom impact. And Lord, help us to transmit this information so that every mother would receive it in their heart and know that they have a 
an assignment, a continued assignment, and there's continued work to do, but it's kingdom work, and we just pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. So, you know, it's very simple. Our aim today, and I'm sure this is happening around the country, but our aim is to honor the biblical role of motherhood and also glorify Jesus Christ who in his incarnation in Mary's womb, blessed the role of, of motherhood. And you may think of it, God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only son, and he did it through the vehicle of a mom. This is, this is mind-boggling. This is amazing. Matter of fact, Paul, the apostle, picks up on this in Galatians 4, 4 through 5. Look at this scripture. We'll, we'll read it together. It says, this is, this is powerful. It says, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, Born of a woman. Everyone say, born of a woman. Born of a woman. Born, of a woman. born under the law to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons and as daughters, right? So God's method for redeeming the world, he, he used a mother to do this. He, you know, Jesus was conceived and born of a woman. The script We just read this. Think of the human... Fragility. Think of, think of the understated audacity or the humble vulnerability of God's Son being born of a woman. But also I want you to think of the, of, the, of the great power and think of the amazing generosity of God and how He used the role of motherhood in His redemption plan. This is huge. Yeah, so if we have a theme, and, and you'll see it on the screen, it's that the God-given potential in all of moms is just generosity leveling up. So it's the give that just keeps on giving. We have the potential to give life, yeah. to give truth, to give faith uh, by godly examples and by godly words. And I think I'm, I was guilty of this. We don't really understand the power. We just think as women, it's just what we do. We bring kids into the world, you know. But we don't understand the power that we have in, in the decision to be either a stay-at-home mom or just the sacrifices that we make. If we grasp the power that we had to change society, to make a difference, to shake this kingdom, to bring God's kingdom here through by giving life and raising godly children, I just think we would drop Jesus bombs in our kids' lives yeah. every chance we got. Yeah, that's so good. Ma uh, maternal power should never be underestimated. When I say maternal power, you know, the idea of, of a mother having social clout or a mother having spiritual influence and authority is foreign to so many people, or maybe it doesn't register uh, because, you know, it's easy for us to see mothers as, oh, yeah, you're nurturing and you're, you're domesticated. You're, you know, keeping the house and you love the kids and that's great. But, but many people don't see that mother as a powerful force to be reckoned with. And that's what we want to hone in on today. But there's this tension of why we may not see this or why, why mothers may not easily recognize this God-given potential that, that is so evident, but maybe not so evident and even understated. What's the, you know, there's, there's a yeah, reason why. I, I think it's societal pressure and, and mixed messages that we get. So on weeks like this week, it's, oh, moms are heroes. But then the rest of the year, there are these subliminal covert messages that, that say, okay, you choose to be a mom. There's going to be major FOMO. You know, you miss out on a high paying job. Um, a career where you can be recognized and lots of accolades. Yeah, and yeah. so we gather these godless um, values into, into our lives without even realizing it and then perpetuate in that, ki in that um, by plugging our kids into the, the very activities and tracks that support these things. And so there's, there's all these isms that come at us yeah. too that on the surface look good, you know, intellectualism, materialism, um, careerism, yeah, hum humanitarianism, but there's no biblical framework. And so these are the things that make us feel um, insignificant and like our contribution is immaterial. But I want to say, moms, we can't take the bait and we can't let our Christian values be built on what misguided friends' values are, our own media, or on mm -hmm. just uh, liberal educators. We can't, we can't draw that into our lives. We have mm -hmm. to have 
We have to have uh, values that are built on the word of God, uh, values that are just simply Jesus. Yeah, we also have a couple more isms. We have chauvinism, which would say you get in your place and, and you, you, know, we, you know, chauvinism would put the woman or the mother down or even feminism. That's another ism that makes women feel like they should be doing something else and that, you know, if they're, if they're a mother, then they're going to miss out and they're doing a lot of hard work that doesn't pay off and on and on we go. It's a demeaning interruption. And so this is what basically Sonia and I are trying to uh, hone in on, and that is there, there's a reason why mothers do not see this God-given role or this potential that they have of really making kingdom impact. You know, it's next-level generosity. How is it? How is it next-level generosity? Is that, it's that mothers, there are three things we want to share with you today. Mothers give life, not just give birth. We know moms give birth, but mothers give life. And basically, moms are, Christian moms, I, I clarify, Christian moms are stewards of the chain of life. The psalmist speaks of this in Psalm 139. I think we need to tag in on that scripture. Yeah, these I'll scriptures. say this. Uh, some moms don't feel like they're moms until they give birth. Right. But birth, we believe that birth starts at conception. And so you're a Life mom. starts at conception. Life, sorry, did I say birth? Yeah. <laughs> life starts at conception. And so here's a familiar verse to us all, but I hope we can look at it with fresh eyes. Psalm 139, 13 mm. through 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit mm. me together. Knit. Who knits? I mean, you know that that's a work of art. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you mm. because I am fearfully and wonderfully. That means distinguished, right. distinct, wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, my mother's womb, when I was woven. Woven there means variegated colors, mixed colors. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book, your register, before one of them came to be. And so we see these words, knit, woven, formed, fashioned, these variegated colors. Y'all... If you yeah. go to Blue Letter Bible and look at the original and the cross references of this passage, it's a picture of the Genesis creation. And moms, we are partnering with the master designer yeah, to continue good. life, to continue creation for his glory. It's amazing. Yeah. We need to be in all of it all yeah. over again. That's good. That's a mic drop right there, but don't drop it. That's expensive mic, though. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Those key words, but creation, I picked up on that word. We, we know God created Adam and Eve. We know that God created the mountains, the streams, the fields, the animals, and all the other inanimate objects of creation, but we fail to see that God's hand is involved in the development of the unborn child. And, and this, is, this is so rich uh, with truth. God's command after he created Adam and Eve was, hey, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. This was God's plan. This was God's kingdom plan. He gets glory by sons and daughters being born. Mm -hmm. and, but obviously Satan's agenda is population control. And there's a lot of talk going on right now about population control. Because supposedly our world is getting, we're growing you know, in numbers too quick. And I think that's a misnomer. Actually, that's not true. I think anytime life is devalued in the womb and, the, and, and we're going to say we are have these abortions, I think that is fighting against the hand of God. It's not just a crime against humanity. It's a crime against God. Did y'all know that there are over 50 million abortions that happen every year? If you think of the three largest cities in America and then add a lot more to that, that's how many children are being quietly killed in their mother's womb as they scream silently. It's horrific, and it's just something that we've come to accept. We've come to accept abortion as that it's just what happens. Y'all, it's murder because we just read that God's creative process, he himself is involved in the development of that unborn child. And abortion is legal. We know that. We know, we know it's constitutionally protected here in the United States, uh, and it's, it's a medical procedure that's been... Uh, the, you know, they check that box and they've signed off on that. The CDC and the World Health Organization do not see abortion as the cause of death. Why? Because they don't see that that's life. 
They don't see that that unborn, they think the unborn child is just to be discarded or it's disposable. But we believe as, as Christians, and we're not just these Bible thumpers who are just crazy talking. No, there's something about the life that is given. And this is why we're celebrating Mother's Day today, because you have brought life. You have given life. You've partnered with God. You're a steward of the chain of life. I feel like I'm on a soapbox now. But hey, y'all, right now, there are some cities in Texas. I think Lubbock, Texas in particular, has just uh, had a big vote where they want to make their city a sanctuary for the unborn. Now, who knows what's going to happen after that, but I think we, we can't be afraid to talk about what we believe the Scripture says about this issue. And I know it's not politically correct for me and Sonia to sit here while people are watching online and we're in this room and, and to talk about these issues. But if we can't talk about what the Bible talks about, then we can't talk about anything. So I probably need to just move on because I could keep on talking about this. It, it really, say, it, I'm passionate about it. Amen. So yes, partnering with God in the biological is, is amazing, but it doesn't stop there. Our giving as moms does not start right. there. stop there. It goes with giving truth. That's pulling truth from the word of God and planning it into our kids. It's more than just barking out, I told you not to, you know, all the do's and don'ts mm -hmm. of the household or even of, you know, Christian do's and don'ts. It's more than that list, but we continue giving mm -hmm. by doing what another familiar uh, proverb says in 22.6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, yeah. and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And we like the, you know, when he's old, he won't depart from it, but the hard part is the first word, training. We know that training is not a one and done. And, you know, I'll just say this, that Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, kids and student ministry is great, and we're here for you. Fly on you. We're Sorry. here for you, but moms, grandmas, we, we have a responsibility to, mm. to give a daily dose of Jesus. And I think all of us would agree that we want purity of heart, purity of thought and living for our kids. We want just godliness for our kids, but a steady diet of secularism. Mm -hmm. And I'm not against baby shark doo 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 doo. I mean, I'm saying it a few times to, <laughs> to our new itsy grandbaby. Itsy bitsy spider. And the itsy bitsy spider, I mean, 50 times a day. I'm not against that, those are cute. Uh, Minecraft, Fortnite, those may be fun things for our kids, but we cannot, again, we cannot expect them to be on a path of purity and a path of godliness if that's what they get the most of. Psalm 119, 9 through 11 says, how can a young yeah. person stay on the path of purity? Yeah. By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The only way that our kids are going to stay on the path of purity, stay on a path of godliness, the only way they're going to hide their words in their his word in their hearts mm -hmm. is if we are presenting it to him, we are putting it on their plates, we are answering their problems with, with answers from the word of God, mm -hmm. we're, we're texting them scriptures, yeah. we're talking about Jesus, we're, we're digging in the word ourselves and sharing those thoughts with our kids. They're getting it day in and day out. Yeah, That's I, how they stay on that path. And we get it. You know, we raised two kids, and it's sometimes intimidating. You think, how can I really unpack the full gospel to my children? And so you hope the Sunday school teacher or the kids' ministry program does it or student ministry. And I would just say, I'll give a plug for our student and kids' ministry. Both of them are rocking it, and they're, they're, they're educating our kids about Jesus. But it's not just them doing it. Uh, we as parents, we have that responsibility at home. And they're not going to get it at school, per se, but they, they will get it at home. And so what Sonia just said packs a wallet because, you know, there's this, this awesome responsibility, but yet at the same time, don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. You don't have to be super serious. You can still have fun with kids learning Scripture. I remember when we were young parents and Sonia, you know, was that stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home mom, and just um, doing her thing. And I would come home and... You know, she would be trying to get Lemuel to learn the books of the Bible because we wanted them to know the books of the Bible. And so I came home one, one you remember this, I came home one uh, afternoon and she, she had, it was kind of like a rap, but it was like the Old Testament. And it, was, it, was, it went like this, 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Well, we'll stop with Song of Solomon because that's where our whole uh, mom and dad thing started. In this. Anyway, never mind. All right. So, you know, as a mom, as a mom and dad, as a mom in particular, you may be tempted to believe that you're invisible, that your voice is not heard, and that you're not essential to society. And yet, here's the, here's the role. A Christian, a Christian mom is influential. A Christian, you know, Christian moms are influential disciple makers. Paul picks up on this when he's speaking to Timothy, his protege. Timothy was soon to be a missionary partner with the Apostle Paul. Look what Paul said in 2 Timothy 3. We'll start at verse number 12. He says, Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy... You have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. What we just read, it's amazing. Paul is saying, okay, things are going from bad to worse. People are deceiving and being deceived. It's a bad world out there. But he's saying, hey, be encouraged. Continue in what you've learned and what you've become convinced of. And you know from whom you've learned it. And you've learned it from infancy. The Scripture, you've been taught truth. From a baby, Paul is telling, he's reminding Timothy of this. Well, who are these people in Timothy's life? Look, go back to chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Paul specifically names the two women in Timothy's life. He says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. This is huge. Timothy, you know, he's a young adult. He's a young pastor. This young adult needed to be reminded of what he was taught as a child from infancy. His grandmother and mother made a tremendous impact in his life. And I I think that should not be uh, left out. It shouldn't go without saying that even the young adults and the young leaders in this room, you need to be reminded that mom and grandma, they still have a powerful voice in your life and they've trained you up to this point. Remember what you were taught. Listen listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying through your mother and your grandmother. Yeah, if I can get on a little bit of a soapbox. Uh, Somewhere along the way, there's there's a false narrative that our kids pick up from from media, from peers, from godless curriculum that, that my mom just doesn't get me. She's not relevant anymore. And so BFFs and social media influencers take the place of, of mom's advice. Mm-hmm. And if I can say this, even if you're to, to the youth and, and the young adults in, in the room, that even if your, your friends are Christians, they just haven't lived a life long enough to be spiritually developed, to be at the same level um, and have the same amount of wisdom that that your your godly mother has, and yeah. so I would encourage you to stay connected to yeah. your godly mother. Uh, the enemy's agenda is to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can't kill you in the womb, he's going to try to kill yeah. that godly influence and that that foundation that has been built. And so I'm just I'm just going to say, yeah, stay connected. Your mom gets you. Uh, daughter, she she knows about Mean Girls. Son, she can tell you what friends are taking you down uh, mm-hmm. a destructive path. Your your godly grandmothers, your godly mothers know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two. Right. And so they can even even in celebrating your dreams, they're going to speak truth into your life by letting you know if those dreams can become a re- reality or if those dreams are just going to be a a nightmare. Yeah. So stay, stay connected to them. Yeah, so ne- this next level generosity that's imparted or transmitted through this God-given potential of motherhood is not just the giving of life or, and, and giving birth, but also giving truth, being truth tellers and truth seekers 
will, you know, truth tellers and truth seekers will raise up children who are also truth tellers and truth seekers. But then there's this third level, and this is what we want to end up on today, and that is that you know, Christian moms, they, they give faith. Well, how, how do Christian moms give faith? How can a Christian mom transmit faith? Obviously, faith comes from God. But Christian moms are really exemplary role models. So let's check this out in 2 Timothy 1, 5. Let's look at it again. Paul says to Timothy, he said, I'm reminded of your sincere faith. Okay, look how it reads. A faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And now I'm sure dwells in you as well. Wow. Wow. So the who in this scripture is grandma and mom, and the what is sincere faith. Theirs was not a label. It was a lifestyle. No. Their faith was. And so we as moms, grandmothers, we cannot perpetuate or gift our kids with insincere faith. If, if faith isn't sincere, it's just not there. We mm-hmm. don't have anything to give to them. And children are observers. They, yes, they hear you, but they pick up on the spirit and the essence of who you are. They know if you're a hypocrite. They know if you truly believe and trust in Jesus by the priority you place on, on knowing Jesus and on, on living for him. And so the greatest gift that a mom can give to her kids is a faith in action, a faith that's not just talked about and, and heard about, you know, occasionally, but a, a living mm-hmm. faith that is living, sleeping, breathing Jesus yeah. day in and day out. And I can tell you right now that Lois and Eunice lived and breathed Jesus. I mean, they, they filtered everything, every decision, every action through the lens of the gospel and the life of Jesus. It was not and a faith that was just, hey, let's take Timmy to synagogue on the Sabbath and, and he'll be good. No, it was, it was daily. And the Apostle Paul saw that, and he commented on it, and he highlighted it, highlighted it for us because he wanted, he wanted Timothy to know, but then we get to see that, yeah, when we see someone whose life is, is sincere, we know that something has been planted in, in them. And so I just want to say that moms, we have that potential Let's seize it. If, if you've missed the opportunities to plant Jesus, words of life into your kids at an early age, it's not too late. Right. If you're 88 or if you're 38 or anywhere in between, there is still time for your voice to make a difference, for you to make an impact on your kids and then on society and future society and on the kingdom of God to bring yeah. him glory. So good. You know, I definitely didn't want to embarrass Sonia. Um, I, look at, I look back at when we were raising our kids and how Sonia was such a godly example to our, to our kids. And, you know, pastoring and leading, obviously there's a lot of eyes on you. And so when no one's looking and when you're just at home, uh, you know, it's easy to let your guard down. But Sonia, even when she lets her guard down, she, would, she was all about eating, sleeping, and, you know, drinking Jesus, taking Jesus in. And also taking Jesus out to, to, to share the gospel with, with, uh, with people that don't know Jesus. And so I rem- I'll never forget um, the times we've pretty much surrendered our Christmas and Thanksgiving holidays. When it could be just us, uh, Sonia would open up our house and she would bring, invite the entire Indiana State Women University tennis team to, uh, to our house on Christmas Day, and they're, they're cooking in the kitchen, and Sonia's pouring into them, and we're you know, seeing their lives impacted with the gospel. And our kids get to see this. They get to see their mom telling others about Jesus. And so I think Lemuel and Liesel not only love Jesus, um, and, but they also want to share Jesus. And, and a lot of it is due to Sonia, her role as a mother in their lives. And so I just say thank you for that. And I want to say thank you to all the moms that are here today. Thank you for, do, thank you for doing what, what you've done and what you continue to do. It's a thankless job sometimes. And then once a year, we get to say Happy Mother's Day. But day in and day out, your faithfulness doesn't go unnoticed. And there's a transmission of that. So once again, I would like to ask all the moms to stand. And I want to pray for you, pray over you, if you can do that. Moms, will you stand?
And if you're, if you're uh, near a mom, if you can just hold, hold their hand or put your hand on their back or their shoulder, we're going to pray over the moms today. Father, thank you for each mother and grandmother that is here today that they have selflessly poured into the lives of their children and their grandchildren. And Lord, we, we pause for a moment to not only say thank you, but we ask for just an endowment, a spiritual blessing to be upon these mothers. Help them to be edified and just encouraged by these words today. Their work is not done. The work is effective. They are truly influencers. Help them to recognize and appreciate the powerful influence that they have and that they will continue to have. Lord, we just celebrate your kingdom work that's being done by moms around the world and especially the moms here at NCC. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. So let's all stand one more time. Let's give our moms a big hand. Before we go, we love you. We appreciate you.